Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be giving this vintage dresser a modern makeover by duping the famous pottery barn finish for way less than $2,800. Give us some thoughts. Well, since you asked, this dresser feels pretty solid, even though it's made of mostly particle board with a laminate coating. So it's the perfect piece to create a faux wood finish using paints and glazes. I learned how to do this finish from a fellow YouTuber, Black Sheep House. She's one of my favorites from even before I started refinishing furniture. So check her out, she's got some pretty great stuff. I like to remove my hardware first so that I can get a really good clean behind those handles. I'm using crud cutter today, but you can use any kind of a degreaser or even Dawn dish so it works great too. Just be sure to read the back of the label to find out if you have to rinse off the residue with water. So this piece came off of it. Um, I was debating whether or not I thought it was a veneer or a laminate, but this came off and then as you can see on the back, um, it looks nothing like wood. When I try to snap it, it just snaps right off. So, <laughs> safe to say that Pretty this is shells. laminate or another plasticky material. So, if you ever wanted to know what fake plastic wood looks like, I'm making a small repair on the lifting laminate with some super glue. The next thing I'm gonna do is scuff up the piece with my orbital sander, which is a furniture flipping must have if you're into saving time and muscle. I'm using a 180 grit here because I don't wanna grind away the laminate. I just wanna create some teeth for my primer to stick to. But as you can see, I went a little crazy on the sanding here. I think I just got mesmerized by seeing the little dots come out, but I really should have been sanding with a 220. Next, I wanna fill in those routered edges on the drawer, so Kendall's gonna mix up some Bondo and fill in those lines. Bondo is pretty stinky and it is toxic, so you always wanna wear a respirator. He's also going to cover up any exposed chipboard because if you don't, then you're really going to see that cork-like texture through your paint. Another thing to know about working with particle board is that it'll soak up moisture like a sponge. So always cover up any exposed areas with Bondo or prime with a shellac or oil-based primer. Bondo dries super quickly, so after about 15 minutes, I was ready to sand it all down smooth. Now, because I went all nutso on the drawers, there's a lot of exposed particle that I have to cover up. So to do that, I'm gonna be priming with an oil-based primer. This one is Kills, and if you're familiar with my old videos, you'll know that this is my number one go-to because it's so easy to apply, there's no cleanup, it's pretty cheap, and best of all, it's oil-based. So it'll really seal in those exposed areas. I was getting low on my primer, but I was able to get one drawer coated before heading to Home Depot okay. to get some more. But once we got there, I got sidetracked and had to check out every aisle first. Is this the one you're talking about? Oh. Oh, they're all there. I get kind of uncomfortable filming in public, so this is what happens when Kendall tells me to act natural. I got you on the video. you don't. Still look at the what. We came back home to the dogs chasing rabbits in the back, just having the time of their lives. Okay, let's get back to business and prime this sucker. To create the base color for my faux wood finish, we used a mix of Valspar's Faint Maple and Bear's Riviera Beach. This finish is so versatile so you can do any color you want. You can go grayer for a cool look or browner for a warmer finish. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is the first time I'm not trying to achieve a smooth coat. I want those brush marks to create a little bit of texture and interest. And so while the paint is still wet, I dragged another hard bristled brush over it to create even more texture. Now there's something to be said about how these paints level out even though I tried to create texture. I'm just using plain acrylic latex paints and it leveled out so well which would be a huge plus in any other project. Next is where the magic happens. You guys ready? I'm using this Rust-Oleum decorative glaze that I got on sale for $10 from $35. I've had my eye on it for months and this never went on sale so when it did I had to grab all their stock. So as you can see, I put on a thin layer of this glaze all over. I think I only had to dip twice to do this drawer. And then I take this big fluffy brush to smooth it all out and it'll create really natural and smooth looking grain lines. This glaze takes quite a long time to dry so you've got a lot of open work time to perfect your finish. And finally, I take the same brush from before to kind of roughen up those smooth grains. I find that this last brush helps it to look even more natural. So apparently I'm on sale for being slow moving, which actually isn't too far from the truth. <laughs> Now for these smaller areas, I'm using this little nail brush from the dollar store after the fluffy brush. These nail brushes are great for so many things. I use it to clean my paint brushes, my sprayer, my hands. I even use it to scrub stripper off, but not the same one. I do keep a separate one when I'm working with water-based or oil-based stuff. And if you mess up, just go back over it with your deck staining brush and then you can try again. Now we've got one more step, but I can't continue until all my glaze dries, so I'll have to leave that overnight and come back to it tomorrow. So it's the next day, I'm taking a tiny bit of a light yellow paint on the ends of like four bristles of a chip brush, wiping off most of it, and then I'm dragging it through the glaze. This will create more dimension in your finish, kind of like highlights in your hair. I will say though, if you're going to do this, you want to use literally the tiniest amount. Otherwise, it'll start looking a little bit too DIY if you know what I mean. Alright, get your masks on everyone because it's time to spray paint the handles and the legs. I got these cup pulls off of Amazon, which I'm going to link below. I'll actually try to link all the products I used in this video in the description too. I'm using the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Black Spray Paint, and I think that this one in particular is my favorite. I've used a couple others, and this one goes on the blackest and the smoothest after just one coat.
Now after that yellow paint's had time to dry, I'm going in with my clear polyurethane out of my spray gun to seal it all in. The last thing we have to do now is to drill out our holes to attach the handles and put the legs back on the dresser. Let's take now. Let's take now. Enough fooling around, let's put on those legs. The dresser's all done, I think it looks so modern and on trend, and this is such a great way to transform your old pieces that may not be made out of real wood. But I want to know what you guys think. Is this a passable dupe? Let me know in the comments down below. So that's it you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.